Hello YouTube. I am here today to give my thoughts on the Troy built 18 inch Revolution Quiet Cut Reel Mower. Little background. I have been doing a lot of research on the manual reel mowers uh, in regards to some things I want to do with my lawn. Uh, I want to go with uh, partial clover lawn and I think that I will get a better cut with a real mower rather than my old gas powered rotary. The other thing I want to do is I want to kind of uh, diminish my footprint on the environment from using that big old gutsy gas powered rotary and start using something a little bit more friendly to the environment. Now I once again I was doing a lot of research and at that point in time when I was going to make the purchase I was 99 percent sure that I was going to go with the Fiskars uh, Max version of a front throw reel mower um, but uh, my only hurdle to jump on that was the extremely high price point not to say that the Fiskars isn't a good unit after all in 2010 I believe it was uh, popular mechanics best design of the year uh, so that says a lot about that mower there's many, many videos on it with people praising these mowers. And uh, so I was pretty much sold. I was going to get one of those. But as I continued to do my research, and I kept going back to that price point, and I kept feeling that it was just going to cost a little more than I wanted to pay without actually uh, seeing it work in person. So, I decided that, that I would step down to uh, a slightly lower priced unit, which was the Fiskars Stay Sharp Plus model. And once again, I was 99% sure I was going to purchase that model. But while I was doing some research, I was out and about, and I was at a local seller, uh, which was uh, selling that particular mower, um, the Plus and the Max, and I happened to notice this Troy built mower that was sitting there. And the first thing I noticed right offhand was that the Troy built mower virtually looked identical to the uh, Fiskars Stay Sharp Plus mower. So I went down to the local seller and took a snapshot of the Fiskars Stay Sharp Plus so we can compare that to the Troy Built Revolution Quiet Cut. As you can see, these are both very similar by design. I was a little confused as to why they were so similar, uh, so I decided to go home and do some research. One of the things that I discovered was that Troy Built is no longer their own company. They are actually owned by MTD here in Canada. And so I went to their website, and the unusual thing was that I could not find this mower on their website. The second thing that was unusual about it was the fact that I could not find this mower anywhere on the internet except at Canadian Tires website uh, where they were selling it. So I thought, how could this possibly be? So with a little uh, determination, I decided to give Troy Built uh, a call and talk to their customer service. What I found out through the customer service for Troy Built was that this mower did not belong to them under the MTD umbrella. Uh, but the girl who helped me out uh, 
said that she would do some research and she would get back to me. She did get back to me within a couple of minutes, actually, and she told me that this actual lawnmower, even though it says Troy built, actually belongs to. Let's see if I can get down here. Great States American Lawnmower Company. So that was very interesting revelation. So I, um, she was also kind enough to actually give me their phone number. So I got their phone number and I went to their website. And guess what? This mower is not on their website either. So I gave uh, Great States a call and spoke to their customer service and actually the customer service rep who was more than generous to help me out she wasn't aware of this mower however her supervisor was aware of this mower he said that these mowers are absolutely brand new and that's why I'm not finding them anywhere so I decided in the interest of promoting good eco-friendly products I decided to pick one of these up and do a review on this product. Now, if there's anybody out there from Fiskars who wants to maybe send me a model, uh, maybe their Stay Sharp Plus, so I can do a comparison of the two, uh, I think that would be a fair comparison since both of those mowers look, uh, they look identical to each other. Uh, in the way that they are built with some slight changes, but they do look identical to each other. Uh, the one thing that I will say um, is different with this particular mower uh, compared to the Fisker Stay Sharp Plus is the height adjustment. Uh, the height adjustment is a single lever height adjustment on the Troy Belt Revolution, and the Fiskars is a two handed height adjustment. Also, I believe the Fiskars uh, Stay Sharp Plus is a 17 inch mower, whereas the Troy Built Revolution Quiet Cut Real Mower is an 18 inch mower. So, let's get down to it. I'm going to unbox this and get it all prepared, and I'll be right back. We're looking at the Troy Built 18 inch Revolution Mower Quiet Cut uh, Real Mower no touch quiet cut technology model number 515 18TB I'll be right back so I decided as I was opening the box that I would take you uh, along for the ride now I've opened the box and the first thing we see here obviously are some handle extensions and here we go an instruction manual that's uh, bagged up pretty nice in uh, several languages. We have uh, some bars here. These are obviously for the handle, the extensions. So we're going to pull that aside along with the instruction manual. And it looks like we have here all of our hardware uh, to put these handles together. Uh, looks like this is all done without tools so far, but let's wait and see. Okay. So we're going to pull this styrofoam out. Now, mind you, uh, I got this mower uh, on a pretty good deal because the box was damaged, as you can see there in the back. Uh, so, yeah, they, they were friendly enough to give me a little bit of a deal on this one. So, as we can see here, it looks like it's pretty securely set in this box. It's not moving. It's not going anywhere. And, uh, actually, it looks really good uh, just sitting there in the box. Uh, but, looking really good doesn't mean it's going to operate great. So, let's find out. Okay, first impressions. Right out of the box. First thing I noticed was this unit has some weight to it. I believe this unit is going to weigh just over 40 pounds, 41 pounds to be exact, if 
uh, I remember correctly. Um, is there an advantage to that? Absolutely, especially if you have a thicker, tougher grass that you have to cut lower. Uh, we're talking about zoysia, we're talking about St. Augustine's, we're talking about Bermuda's. Uh, up here in Canada, we don't have those type of grasses. We have a lighter type of grass, grass that I'm actually not very pleased with. Being a California boy, I had St. Augustine, and I felt that there was a beautiful lawn, a uh, beautiful grass. I loved it, absolutely. I grew up with Bermuda as well. Uh, up here, it's just a mix of I don't know what, and I just call it crap grass. And uh, most of the time, it's full of weeds. I try to keep the weeds down out of it, but time is so short for our growing season up here that most people just let the weeds grow, let them go to seed, and they blow everywhere, and you end up with denny lines everywhere. So it's always a battle up here to have a nice-looking lawn. Not to say that there aren't any beautiful lawns up here, uh, in Canada because there are certainly beautiful lawns and that's what I'm working towards so that's why I'm making the move to incorporate clover into my lawn and once again like I said that this unit here I believe will give a better looking cut to a clover lawn rather than the rotary um, Back again to the first impressions. This uh, mower is very well put together from what I can tell. Uh, uh, the paint job on it is is extremely nice. It doesn't look like it's flawed or dripped anywhere. Uh, it's metal. This is metal. The height adjustment. And it's spring loaded so it actually works with you to load this up. Another difference that I see right offhand uh, between this unit and the Fisker's Stay Sharp Plus is this one is using the older style uh, kind of uh, rolling pin rear system, whereas the Fisker actually uses casters. Uh, now, I've heard some things about uh, casters versus uh, these old, older rollers. The older rollers are more uh, maneuverable because they allow you to slide, whereas the casters do not when you're making a turn. Now, um, like I said, I don't have a Fiskars uh, to try, so I don't know if that is in fact true. I have seen videos where people are making those turns and they're lifting it up and turning it. Maybe not the best thing to do because, eh, you know, you might be able to you uh, to do it uh, with some practice without actually missing a spot but uh, I think that uh, this throwback probably from uh, Great States uh, to put this on here through their design is, uh, is something that's been around for for years and years and has never failed them so they probably went with that design. Uh, this is also a uh, Five blade system, which is a it's a, it's a, a system exactly just like the uh, Fisker system, where the blade is not touching. Uh, another thing I like about it is is these uh, front wheels here, solid rubber front wheels. Uh, they feel uh, pretty nice. So let's get this put together and go from there. Okay, so. We now have the Troy built Quiet Cut Revolution 18 inch mower all put together. And uh, impressions on putting it together? Really easy. Went right together. Uh, basically, it's as simple as the six bolts with nuts, and we have the base of the frame. I'll come around back. So you have your upper form which connects to these extensions that were there at the top of the box and then you come down to this lower uh, bar here which are connected by these four bolts you have the face plate that's just a decorative uh, plate no purpose served there other than being uh, decorative and you have 
your two handles which connect here with what these are called get a shot these are called e rings and they just snap onto the frame right there into a little channel <coughs> so uh, went together uh, in no time flat uh, wasn't very difficult at all now my impression and and I understand nowadays people want things to be easy they don't want to put together anything with uh, tools uh, but come on folks get a set of tools you can get them on sale at Christmas <laughs> 45 piece tool set that will get the job done for jobs like these putting things together that you purchase uh, for less than $19 uh, sometimes you can even get them for $10 and get a set of tools uh, the manufacturers are doing their best to make these components all go together uh, easy as possible however uh, in order to do so sometimes they do things as in this case uh, like this and what they're doing here is they're using this plastic uh, cap here which is designed so you can just turn this on hand tight do I like that feature? Not necessarily. Uh, it feels uh, very flimsy to me, so I'll have to like somewhat drop a point on on the uh, quality of those, even though I don't want to. But it just seems to me that. If uh, you have issues with something like that and they're getting loose or something and you're going to go to turn that one day and it's going to snap right off. So it's not the end of the world. You just tighten the nut on there with the wrench. Uh, maybe even put a little blue Loctite so it won't come loose with the vibrations of rolling this thing around for years and years. Um, but uh, me preferably, I would have went with just uh, nut and bolt. Uh, would have worked for me and I would have felt a little bit more confident. So you know what, I'm not going to take a point off for that because it's just trying to help out those who don't have the tools. I was trying to get this thing together with as much ease as possible but I would take a point off of those people who can't go out and just get a set of tools. Other differences. What I see offhand is I, when I looked at the Fiskars Stay Sharp Plus uh, I noticed that this cowling here is a metal cowling on the Fiskars, where this one here is a plastic cowling. Okay, so before I start cutting, I want to make sure that the unit is properly adjusted right, meaning the reel uh, is not rubbing against this bottom uh, portion here. Uh, this is why this unit is called a quiet cut. And as you can see, it's not making any contact anywhere but no contact doesn't necessarily mean that this is adjusted properly so the big test that everybody does is the paper test so I've got some typical printer paper here and we're going to give it a shot and see how this comes from the factory adjusted so what we want to see is if we get that scissor action with the paper Oh, well, oh, there we go. It seems to be cutting it fine. We're not getting any, we're not getting any contact, and it seems to be taking that paper right off. I might be going a little bit at the wrong angle. because obviously your grass is not going to be going in sideways. So, going in at the proper angle, we get it, it's cutting it. It's taking it off. So I would say from the factory that this is adjusted properly. Okay, so we're back. We're out here on the field of battle. Now, one of the things I like is how the handle is shaped. 
I like the handle because it gives you an option on how you can hold it. This seems a little bit more comfortable than your standard straight handle. This seems a little bit more natural to hold it this way. As I said before, this is a front throwing model. And one of the things I liked about this compared to the Fisker's Stay Sharp Plus is your height adjustment here uh, is basically from one inch to three inches. The Fiskers, I believe, will go four inches, but personally, I can't see the point in going four inches. Three inches actually seems a little tall, but I would probably leave it at three inches uh, just before winter. Uh, one of the things we do here in Canada is we like to leave it a little long for winter. Um, uh, but it is, as you can see here, spring loaded. So it makes adjusting the height very easy. As a matter of fact, it has just enough spring in it to where you can easily do this with one hand. And it has just enough weight where you can drop it the same way. I mean, that's, that's pretty easy. So we're going to take a short little break from my review. And we're going to go back to the local store where I visited. And we're going to look at the Fiskars Stay Sharp Plus model, which I've been comparing the Troy Built Revolution 2. What we're going to look at on this video is the height adjustment. Now, as you can see here, there is a height adjustment knob on this lawnmower. And this knob only controls one side. As you can see, as I'm trying to adjust that height upward, I'm actually lifting the front wheel off the floor as I'm trying to adjust it and so it's giving me some resistance. I'm going to focus in here and you're going to see how when you pull that knob to get your other adjustments you have to actually get that knob, uh, the pin, to go back into one of those holes. So when you let go of the knob, if it's not lined up, then you have to kind of jiggle it around so it'll pop into the proper hole. And as you can see, now it's completely out of balance because the other side is not done. Now, I don't know if you can notice this or not. I think I'm going to back off here. And you're going to see how the handle on the Fiskars uh, leans backwards. Whereas I can stand the handle on the Troy Bilt straight up and it'll stay up. Uh, that is a big factor for me. Uh, if you have to use both hands to adjust the height on this mower, then you have to contend with that handle uh, either in your face, uh, which is just impossible from that angle. So you have to set that, that handle on your shoulder, on your head to actually get it out of the way so you can do this height adjustment with both hands and contending with making sure that you get both pins in the same hole. So when it comes to this type of adjustment, as you can see here, I'm going to do it again. I'm lifting that front wheel off the ground, um, trying to jiggle it into the hole. Um, this is definitely not scoring points with me compared to the Troy Built Revolution. Troy Built Revolution really put some time in uh, and put some thought into the height adjustment, so they get uh, they get uh, many many points on that particular feature compared to this Fiskars Stay Sharp Plus. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make a couple of passes with this and show uh, some of the features. Uh, the front throwing feature is something I liked because as you can throw the grass forward, you can pick that grass up and cut it again. 
therefore you get a mulching type uh, action through this mower and uh, leaving that uh, mulched clippings on your lawn is actually a pretty good thing. I don't know if I would want to do that permanently. Uh, there are times when you don't want to leave that mulched uh, uh, layer of grass in there. Uh, I know it will eventually decompose and turn into fertilizer, but um, <clears throat> sometimes if you let your lawn get a little too thick, then it gets a little too much out there, it seems to me. So, uh, one of the things that uh, would be nice would be some sort of uh, catcher assembly uh, that maybe Troy Built can come up with to attach to this unit and for in the future for those times when you you just didn't get out there and do your lawn and you don't want to put all those clippings now uh, as you saw the blade adjustment from the factory was pretty well set uh, I was very pleased with the blade setting although my paper feeding skills weren't perfect uh, it was cutting that paper just like scissors uh, in the event that you do have to adjust your blade, it's done here and here. And uh, it's all laid out in the instructions on how to adjust that blade. So let's start cutting and see what she does. Now I'm going to leave it at a uh, two inch setting for right now. And oh, by the way, <clears throat> it's one to three inches, but apparently looking at this, you have eight setting heights. So that gives you plenty of options as far as uh, really getting it to where you want it to uh, to be. So we're gonna just gonna we're just gonna set it right here in dead middle and we're going to um, cut it at that rate. Uh, and make a few passes. Uh, as you can see, I already have done two passes right here, and I'm not sure if you can actually even see the difference between between the lawn that I've made the passes on and the lawn I haven't. Um, I scalped this down pretty low with my rotary last week uh, because I'm getting this ready to plant clover. So, <clears throat> we're going to make a couple of passes, see if we can catch some of that on film, and you can see the action of the mower. And I'm going to have to drop that even lower, because my lawn is pretty low. Let's back that up. Okay, so here we go. And as you can see, we got some grass. It's eating that grass forward. Let's get over here. Ease of pushing. I'm cutting right now. This is pushing extremely easy. Now my first two passes I made on this lawn was at the lowest setting. And I will be honest, at the lowest setting, it was a little harder to push. So I can see where if your lawn got a little tall, you might want to start off at a higher setting and then move to a lower setting. Because <clears throat> the more grass you're getting in there, uh, you're cutting, passing through, the more it's throwing forward, the more you're picking up, it's going to bog the mower down just a bit. Making it a little bit harder to push, but giving you a good workout. So here's a big one. This is the dreaded 
dandelion stalk. This is the Achilles heel of most real mowers. Um, they cannot get this. These things usually will happen is, is they'll hit the blades, they'll lay right down, the mower will go right over it, and you're gone. They still remain. So, let's see how the Troy built Quiet Cut Revolution handles these. I'm going to start with the lowest setting and I'm going to make a couple of passes and move it up with each pass and see if we can get this to cut this dandelion stalk. Turn it around, head back the other way. Well, as you can see, I passed through there and that dandelion stalk is gone. That's pretty impressive. Not to say it's going to get everyone, but it got that one. Matter of fact, there's a piece of it right there. So, I'll have to come back there and get that with, uh, sorry, uh, Troy built, but I'm going to have to get that with my Fisker's dandelion puller because that product rocks. I will admit that. So let's make a couple more passes <coughs> with this <coughs> and I'm going to move it up. Once again, that spring action just really makes it easy. One hand operation to move that up. And I'll make a couple more passes. Now I'm pushing that with one hand and I'm walking very leisurely. Let's head on back this way. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of this and I'll be back with my final impressions. So, there it is. Now, I scalped that down to one inch. That's something I normally would not do. I would not keep my grass this low. But because I'm going to be putting some clover seed down tomorrow, I wanted to make sure that I'm getting that clover seed all the way down to the dirt. So I figure cutting that grass down low is going to get it there. Now, impressions. The unit was uh, very easy to push once I got the grass down low. If you've got lawn that is two, three, or four inches tall and you expect to get out there with I'm going to say any real mower that you're pushing yourself, not motor driven, you're going to have a workout. As I, as I suggested, if you have a taller grass because you haven't cut it in a while, set it to the highest setting and then work your way down to the level of grass that you want. Um, the lawn looks good. It's a good cut. I'm pleased with the cut. I think that once the lawn uh, and the clover grows in, I'm going to raise that up. I'm going to keep that lawn probably about two and a half inches uh, for the remainder of the season. 
and I think it's going to look good. So maybe I'll come back at the end of the season with a uh, video showing the result of using this lawnmower for the short season that we have. What I did was, is I basically, when I was done, I just brushed it off with a brush. Uh, this type of brush here. This type of brush. I just brushed all the components off. And I'll just go ahead and stow that in the garage until uh, I use it again, which will probably be middle of the week. My suggestion is with any real mower uh, that you'll make your life a lot easier if you just take the time and get out there and cut it your lawn at least twice a week during the growing season unless you have like a low uh, or actually slow rather growing grass. I'm very pleased with this mower extremely pleased with it. Uh, uh, pros, uh, it's easy to push it's uh, got enough weight to it to where it feels like it's not a flimsy unit um, it, you just can't beat the height adjustment, it's it's almost virtually, you know, you can do it with your finger. I mean, it's it's so easy. The spring helps and the weight helps, so it's a balance between the two. I'm not too pleased with these, but they're not broken. I think they will eventually break if you keep wrenching on them, uh, but that's easily rectified with just using a nut along with that uh, bolt. Things that uh, I didn't like about the mower. Really, there's not much. Uh, I will say this, and you can see it here. That would be one advantage that the Fisker's top end model, the Stay Sharp uh, Max, has over this mower and the Stay Sharp Max's. Uh, little brother, the Stay, uh, Stay Sharp, uh, Fisker Stay Sharp Plus, that uh, that Stay Sharp can do an edge, but it's no big deal to walk along this edge and get that with uh, a weed whacker. Uh, I'm not going to fall to this mower for that because this is a, a very time-honored style mower with a little bit of a twist with the front throw and people been doing it. My grandfather did it, his grandfather did it, so I'm not going to take that away from the unit. I do like the rollers on the back. I was able to make turns and not worry about uh, the casters digging in. As from what I have read, that's what happens when you have four wheels compared to two wheels. The maneuverability level goes down slightly. Like I said, if Fiskers wants to uh, send me out one, they can give me a call and I will uh, put this Troy Built up against their uh, Stay Sharp Plus model since they are both similar models and I'll give an honest opinion on that one. But I'm going to go with uh, the Revolution as a mower that I would uh, recommend, the Troy Built Revolution Quiet Cut. 18 inches. And that's the other thing. I mean, this mower is on the concrete right now. But, I mean, it's, 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 it's silent. I could come out here at 5.30 in the morning and mow this lawn and nobody's going to know I did it. So, when it says it's quiet cut, it is definitely quiet cut. So, 
uh, I'm going to wrap it up here, and thanks for coming along on this journey and dealing with uh, probably the hundred times I said um or uh, <laughs> so I apologize for that, and I hope that this helps you uh, come to a decision you may be making when purchasing a new lawnmower. Uh, I definitely would say go with a real mower. You get some exercise, you get some fresh air, uh, we reduce our impact on the environment, and uh, also uh, uh, it's just really fun to do, and the results are outstanding. Equivalent to that of a gasoline drinking hog that you're going to be pushing around. Okay, thanks, have a good day.